for my life. Mo gbe pa to n ta ko ileri ati ipinu re fun aye mi. To n fi gbugbu agbara won lati fi ba ipinu re ja ninu aye mi. Oluwa so won de asan. Let them fail. Oluwa je kan kuno. Let all their plans against Lord my divine purpose begin to fail in the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. In Jesus name we have prayed and amen. Think prayer point number 3. The wisdom Lord, that I need to apply for your purpose in my life to become a reality. Father, let it be activated in my life. Ogmo, ti ileri re o fi she, ti ma fi mo uju she mi, ti ileri re o fi she nwa ye mi. Ulu wa jeku bere she nwa ye mi. Let that divine wisdom, Lord, be in action in my life. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Don't joke with this kind of prayer. Begin to pray. Father, Lord, I ask for divine wisdom, O God, to do what I need to do for your purpose. And for your plans to become a reality in my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And amen. This morning I, I led another prayer that all the people we need, Lord, the people I need, I want you to be able to do it. I want you to be able to do it. I want you to be able to do it. I want you to be able to Let's begin to pray in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, I pray right now. All the people I need, the people I need to be connected to, that needs to be connected to me, so that your plan and purpose for my life will become a reality. Father, wherever, wherever they are, Father, begin to bring them into connection with me in the name of Jesus. Let's pray this evening. Father, begin to bring them into connection with me, O oh God. All the men and women I need in order for your purpose to become a reality in my life. Lord, bring them into connection with me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And, amen. and the fifth one, we are going to pray that, Father, deliver me from the wrong relationship distracting my purpose. Shall we begin to pray? Every wrong relationship distracting your purpose for my life. Oh, God, deliver me from them. Let's begin to pray. Oh, God, deliver me from every wrong association, wrong relationship distracting your purpose for my life. Lord, deliver me from all such in the name of Jesus. Are you praying for yourself? Are you praying for yourself? The wrong relationship that I embrace that is affecting your divine purpose for me in the negative. Father, deliver me from such in Jesus' precious name we have prayed and amen. Father, we thank you again. We ask, oh God, Father, let your will be done in our lives. The purpose for which you created us, that you allowed us to be born, Father, let it be made manifest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for it is done. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And let the church shout a believing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's come to the Bible study before we go to the communion segment. Laboring for reward from God. Laboring for reward from God. Laboring for reward from God. Our anchor scripture is Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. Let's all go there. Laboring for reward from God. You know, yesterday I was in the office and there was this a prompt in my mind to go study one man in the scripture. One man that got uh, a, a, a miracle from God uh, by he, uh, from the, his labor, the effort he put into God's work. And the reward came as a healing for him. You know, and it was while I decided to make research about this man that this message came. Laboring for reward from God. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. Are we all there? Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. Hebrews chapter 6. Thank you. It's on screen. And verse 10. It's the first scriptural reading. Let's all be on our feet. Let's read together. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. In honor of God's word, let's be on our feet so that we can read together. After the count of three, one, two, and three. Let's go. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Father, we ask for deep revelation again in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Let's look at the NIV version. 
you know, before we come back again to this. For God is not unrighteous. Look at this one. It says, for God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people to continue to, and, sorry, help, as you have helped his people and to continue to help them. You know, the, the part that touched me most is God is not unrighteous. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown. The King James Version again, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown towards his name. Now, I packaged it like this in my note. Our anchor scripture shows us that God does not forget our work and labor of love that we invest in anything that brings glory to his name. So every single time we are doing anything that brings glory to the name of the Lord, God calls it what? Labor of what? love. That's what he calls it, labor of love. So if anybody's asking you, what is the labor of love in the kingdom? Every time you do anything, that brings glory to the name of the Lord, God sees it as a labor of love. And funny enough, the Bible says God is not an unrighteous God. He will not forget, which means that people that forget are unrighteous people. But God is a righteous God. Now, I also cap it like this again. This is another way I put it in my note. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I wrote here. Let it register in our heart, in your heart, that God keeps record of our labor of love towards his name. Because for scriptures to say he does not forget, it means in another way he keeps record. Hello? So every single time you invest labor of love, God does not forget. Now, and what does that mean in another form? Every single time you invest labor of love, God does what? He keeps record. It's just like as we do daily contribution, monthly contribution, weekly, but we call it a job in, Yoruba, uh, 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 in our Yoruba culture, which means that God himself has what we call the a job of your labor of love. Every single time you invest effort in anything that glorifies the Lord, God says, I will not forget. Hmm. So it means that if you are, if I'm you as a child of God, what am I supposed to do? I need to be investing more labor of love. Hello? I need to be investing what? More labor of love. So that God will have so many things to remember about me. I need to be investing more. Now, it's just like, like, just like I said, you are doing contribution. It is what you contribute, you will collect, Abby, when the time comes. It's the same thing with the Lord. If you invest labor of love, when it is time for God to now reward, he goes to the account to check. What has Prince Will invested in, in the kingdom? Now, that is what he will multiply to bring back when reward comes. So don't forget, let this truth register in your heart that God keeps record of our labor of love towards his name. So everybody, tell you, help me tell your neighbor, God keeps record. Please come down a little bit. God keeps record. Say it again. Yes. Every single time you invest the live, which means that anything you do for God for because you love him, it's called labor of love. You are doing it because I just love God. Why are you doing evangelism? I just love God. Why are you going for visitation? I just, you know, you can do the things of God with wrong intention. But as long as love is the foundation, God is saying, I keep record. Why are you in the, in the, in the ushering department? Because you love God. I love God and I want things to go fine. Why are you in the media? Because I love God. I want people to listen to the message from far and wide. That's why I'm on the internet. I love God. I'm not there because I want to be popular. I love God. I want to be a blessing. I want to touch lives for his kingdom. Because these are the things God will reward. That's why I'm asking you. What labor of love have you invested in the things of God? Or are you just there, you know, living as a uh, God bless me, God bless me kind of Christian. You know, there are Christians like that. All they are looking for is what they can get from God. But the scripture clearly we have read, our anchor scripture, 
God is not unrighteous. He does not forget the labor of love. We invest. So please invest more when it comes to the labor of love. Now let's go deeper. Or let me come again because of those of you who are still writing. Don't forget our anchor scripture shows us that God does not forget our work and labor of love. That we invest in anything that brings glory to his name. He does not forget. And I also said, let this truth register in your heart. That God keeps record of our labor of love towards his name. In accordance, in accordance with Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. Don't ever forget this statement. God keeps record. Now let's now look at examples. Examples of those who invested the labor of love. And let's see the reward they got in return. Let's start with a man called King Hezekiah. It was his name that pumped up in my heart yesterday. When this topic was coming. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 38. Verse 1 to 9. Now don't forget our anchor scripture. Start up is Hebrews 6.10. Now we have explained Hebrews 6.10. Now we are in Isaiah 38. 1 to 9. I read Isaiah 38 from verse 1. The Bible says, In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order. Because you are going to die, you will not recover. Verse 2. We stop at verse 9. Ezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted de devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Ezekiah wept bitterly. I want us to read this verse 3 with the King James Version. I love the way the King James Version puts it. Verse 3, not 4. 3, thank you. And said, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah did what? Wept so. Verse 4. Verse 4. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Instantly, the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. And what did the word say? Verse 5. Don't forget, we stop at 9. Go and say to Ezekiah, Thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayers. Look at this. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thee, how many years? 15 years. I will give you more 15 years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. Verse 7. And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he had spoken. And what will be the sign? Verse 8. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, degrees, which is gone down in the sundial of as Ahaz, 10 degrees backward. So the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down. Verse 9. Verse 9. The, the writing of Ezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness. Now, look at this. I told you when we started with uh, Isaiah 6, 10, that God is not unrighteous to forget our labor of love. I told you the summary that God does not forget whatsoever we do in order to glorify his name. He doesn't forget it. Now look at the case of Isaiah, I mean of Ezekiah. He was sick and from the record we saw clearly that it was a terminal disease. The prophet came and said, we have prayed, we fasted, we've done everything, but sir, you won't recover from this. It was a terminal disease. It was sure that he was going to die. And Isaiah was not just a prophet that prophesied for money. Everyone knows him as an authentic, authentic one. If you look at the scripture, Ezekiah did not argue with Isaiah. Ezekiah did not call Isaiah back to say, please go back and beg God. The Bible says instantly Ezekiah just turned to the wall. And did two things. Number one, he wept. And while he was weeping, 
he was talking to the Lord. Let's look at the content of his word. He said two major things that changed the mind of God. Number one, he said, remember, O Lord, how I have walked. Remember, O Lord, now that talks about his personal relationship with God. Hello, am I communicating? That talks about his personal relationship. That Lord, observe my work with you. I have a relationship with you. That was the first thing. Then the second one, he said, and have done that which is good in your sight. Now, this one points to his service life. I have done what is good. It talks about his, his service life. That as a, as a worker in your, hand, in your hands, because he was a king, an instrument of God to minister to the people. Praise the Lord. That Number one, I serve you personally. And number two, I work for you faithfully. Now, when he presented these two things to God, now don't forget, so the scripture, Isaiah 6, uh, sorry, uh, Hebrews 6, 10, shows us that God does not forget the labor of love. Instantly, I believe God must have said, gone through his record and said, wow, wait, wait, wait. This man has right standing with me in his personal work. This man has right standing with me in his service profile. Tell Isaiah to go back. Isaiah, go back and tell him that he will not die again. That I will give him extra 15 years. Now that's why I want to ask you today. Whatsoever you think or you say you are doing today in God's house, why are you doing it? Hello? Why are you doing it? Are you doing it because there is nothing you can do about it? Oh, be yes, see? You know, some people do things out of compulsion. Hello? That, if not that it is mandatory, if not that I'm living close to the church, if not that I'm a deacon or deaconess in this place, if not that I am, I am, I am the pastor, if not that, if not that I am, are you gonna, there are people that do things like that. Because you must not forget that the only kind of labor that God will not forget is the labor of love. Every other labor God can forget. Hello? I didn't hear you. Hello? Now, the only one God will never forget is the labor of love. If you are doing it out of ulterior motives, you have some motives that you yourself know that it's not to the glory of God. See, stop expecting reward though. You know, people do things. Let them see me. She carry me. People do things. If not that. If not that. So, for you to attract reward from God that will make God to remember you, to want to reward you, it must be done out of one reason. I love God. And I want to pay him back in my own little way for the love he has shown me. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I have to branch. I'm not yet going to where I'm going. So, why are you in the why are you in the choir? Let me even ask. Why are you in the choir? Why are you working in the ushering? Why are you in the sanctuary keepers? Why are you cleaning? Why are you in the beautification? Why are you in the children's church department? Why are you in the technical unit? Why are you where you are? Why are you on the keyboard? The foundation must be love or else God won't remember. So, he got to that point in his guy's life, the king, there was nothing that could speak for him than his what? His labor. And can I tell you this truth? Look up everybody. There comes a time in a person's life that there are certain things you will face that you will need your labor to speak for you. There comes a time like that in a person's life. Now, Tobani, 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 Olua, Ninu, Anu, Rejo, Roti, Roti, and Wong.
praise the Lord. Sorry, they had to switch. There was a technical hitch, so they had to switch to change source of power. So, what am I saying? Ezekiah himself didn't know that such a day will come. keep record. That's why there will be a day that we will need what is in our spiritual account to help us. So he said, oh Lord, remember. So it drove me to study. It drove me to study the life of King Ezekiah. And I wrote under this part, let's examine King Ezekiah's life and see what he, what he told God to remember. I saw four things from his life. We are going to look at each one of them. Second Kings chapter 18. Let's see some of the things he told the Lord to remember. That I believe God remembered to look upon him with mercy. Second Kings chapter 18 from verse 1 to verse 3. Second Kings chapter 18. Now look at this. And he did that, sorry, from verse 1. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Ella, king of Israel, that Ezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Verse 2. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned 20, 20 and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. Verse 3. And he did that. Look at this number one. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. According to all that David his father did. He did that which was right in the sight of God. Let's look at this as number one so that we can take our notes. He established, number one, he established a lifestyle of holiness. He did what was right. To do what is right means to be holy. What is sin? Wrongdoing. What is holiness? Doing the right thing. Hello? Now that was the first record. And can I tell you this truth? This is the first record that every child of God should have before the Lord. If you don't have the record of holiness, hear me, no matter what you do, it's like you are building upon the wind. It won't last. Would I be into college? you be a foundation. So the first thing, first one, now, only foundation That's the foundation. I wrote here, this is the foundational record that every child of God should have before God. No matter what you do, if you do not lay a foundation of holy living before God, you do not have a record at all before God. No matter what you do. If you do not have a foundation of holy living, you do not have a foundation at all. So, if everybody is saying, Lord, remember, in your case, there will be nothing to remember. Because you never had a foundation. Can you see, when Ezekiel was praying, Lord, remember. Because I know so many Christians will like praying. Uluwa ronti, uluwa joronti, uluwa joronti, ronti kini na. Because some people just want to be praying. Say, let, let us pray the prayer of Ezekiel. Oh Lord, remember and favor me. Remember what? Some of you, if God remember your past, he will kill you. Hello? But for Ezekiel to say, Lord, remember, he laid the first foundation. If you say you are born again and you are not living right, how, who, how, what encounter will you say you have? That's why you have to get it right at the foundation. Make up your mind. And we, now, what does it mean to be holy? Holiness is not anything that is so big. Holiness is you living your life in accordance to the word of God. That's what holiness is. Because this Bible is the standard that God will use to justify or to judge the world. So, holiness is you living in accordance to what the scripture says. And 
he had a pass mark. Abi, did you not see it? He had pass mark. Now, then he moved to number two. That's in Second Kings chapter eighteen. Look at verse four. Look at another thing that Ezekiah did in those days that he won't know that he will later need. He didn't know that he will later need. Verse four. The Bible says he removed the high places and break the images and cut down the grooves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days, the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nahushatan. Show us verse 5. Nahushatan. Okay, we'll come back to verse 5. Leave verse. Let's stop at verse 4. I want to use verse 5 later. Now, look at what he, what he did next. The Bible says, he went and broke down all the things that didn't allow the people to worship God. Including that snake. You remember that, that if you read the Old Testament, you understand that snake. That Moses said, look up. If you look at this snake, the serpent that is biting you, we know. But people didn't know that he was pointing to Jesus on the cross. That looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. But after Moses had gone, people started to worship that snake. That, that snake, oh, is the reason why we were not beaten. No, it was a, a figure of speech, you know, a figurative speech. God only uses it as a typology. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, but when he became king, I'm going somewhere. What did he do? He said, I want to use this uh, position as a king to change what is wrong. Now, what should be our lesson from that? Hallelujah. I didn't hear you. What's the lesson? He yielded himself as a vessel in the hand of God to establish God's purpose. Now, which means he had another record. And what was that? He made himself available for God to use him. He made himself available. That's the second record. Which means he made himself available for God to use. He was a worker. Now, and that's why I always, that's one, one thing I always tell all our church members. Why will you be coming to church? One year, two years, and there's nothing you are doing in the house of God. And you say God is your father. Now let's let's assume. Let, okay, now we all live in our various houses. Abby, don't you have a house? We have a house. Now let's just assume you are in your house. You are going, you are going and coming. Going and coming. There's paper on the floor. There is a debt in one part of the house, and you are saying it's not my responsibility to sweep it. Or to pick those debts. Does it show that you are responsible in any way? No. Even when you are a parent, you are now saying, ah, it's my children's responsibility to pick this dirty from the floor. But if, you know, if something is yours, there's a way you undo it. Hello, am I communicating? So, Ezekiah was not only holy, he had a record of service. That's why I'm asking, have you yielded yourself for the purpose of God? Shorty Joware B. You know, at times people don't understand that what we ministers do is sacrifice. Do you think it's easy to sit down, to gather? You know, it's like you, you want to cook. The word of God, gathering it for a message is like you want to cook. You want to cook uh, uh, nsala, uh, or ha, or, or, okay, let me use Yoruba soup. Does Yoruba have soup? Uh, Yoruba mention your soup now. Yoruba mention your soup. Okay, you said it last sake, boy. Okay, it's a Yoruba man. Now you know how you you gather ingredients. Okay, I'm a reja, I'm a ra komo, I'm a ra. We buy you know the ingredients you gather. It's not easy. That's the same way we prepare message. How do I gather the ingredients that will make these people understand this message? It's sacrifice. Now, the same thing. The woman in the choir, the choir is coming on Sunday. How do they get fresh songs that will bless life? Ezekiah yielded himself. Those in the tec technical, if anything go wrong with my sound now, I'll, I'll give them signal. What's going on? Now look at us. Service was on. They took power. They went to switch to Jen. And a department did that. 
you must have a record before God when it comes to service. When Ezekiah said, Lord, remember, this was what, these are the things he was saying God to remember. Remember that when I, I, get, I became king, I used my position as king to change what is wrong. I stopped them from worshipping that, the image of that snake. I removed everything that is not godly. You know, I'm waiting for people like that too in every department. Ushers that will say, Lord, when I came into that ushering department, they didn't have a prayer life. But when I came in, I was able to establish a prayer life. When I came into that department, there was no meeting before or after the ushering department. After each service. Lord, I came in, I instituted that. Oh, when I came into the technical department, the sound wasn't doing well. The technical team used to come to service whenever they liked. But when I came in, I made sure I was available. You know, this was what King Ezekiah did. He established a record. He yielded himself as a vessel in the hands of God. And I must tell you, as you are yielding yourself, a time will come that you will need the reward of that service. Oh God, remember. What will he remember? Now let's go on. Are you learning something? Let's look at number three. I told you I wrote four. The third thing I saw that Ezekiel did that must have moved God. Second Kings chapter 18, verse 5 to verse 7. Second Kings chapter 18 from verse 5 to verse 7. The third thing that Ezekiel did. Now look at this. He said he trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. We stop at 7, verse 6. Look at his level of trust. There was nobody to be rated like him. For he cleave, he cleave to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandment with the Lord commanded Moses. Verse 7. And the Lord was with him and he prospered. I'm, I'm still going to use this verse 7, but look at this 5 and 6. Look up. Look at this. He set a standard of commitment to God for others to pursue by his own commitment to God. Now, what's the third thing that Ezekiah did? He set a standard of commitment to God for others to pursue by his own commitment, which means he used his own commitment to set a, comment, a, a standard. Now, I'm telling you, to ban some people who are jaw, not see, because a jaw can but to get a relationship. Now, and what am I saying? He by his commitment set the standard. Now, and I wrote here, praise the Lord. I didn't hear you, praise the Lord. You see, when we make up our minds to be very devoted to God, we set a standard for others to follow. Now, and I want you to know that God is looking for pay setters. Believers that are standard setters. Every single time, ask everyone. If you ask the Holy Spirit, he will tell you, one prayer that I always pray for myself is, Lord, I want to be a good example in every area. I want to be a good example. Now, so that when you say, okay, is he a child of God? Look at Pastor Prince William Olonuni. I want to be a good example. Is he a good husband? Look at Pastor Prince's family. I want to run a family that is according to the word of God. I'm here. My wife is in church. My children are here. I won't be in church and my children will be somewhere else. Kamari, Paul Lupe. I won't be in church I'm, except if my wife is on a ministration. If you don't see her around, she went for a program. And with my permission. Apart from that, we are in church together. That's the standard I want to set. You see, where is, where is Pastor Mrs.? 
this pastor misses. That's the standard. Then I also want the kind of standard I told God that if you see, see a father, so by the grace of God, these are my products. Hello, am I communicating? Because I was sharing with somebody today. Bible says it. He that does not know how to command his house cannot be an overseer in a church. It's in the Bible now. Who are the Bible? So, true Christians are standard setters. That's why my, I and my wife we used to say it. Esa, one minute, my God will show up. Along with the Mary. There's nothing I trust him for. If he remain one minute, that, you see, one minute to shame. My God used to show up. Because I want to be an example. I want to continue. God look at him that he's an example. I want, when they say, okay, is he a good pastor? I want to be an example. I want to be an example. That when it comes to, check my record. I say, check my record. I'm born again. Nobody will raise up in the church and say, Ah, Pastor Baya Omeo. Ah, Pastor Obo. Obo wo mi mikoso. Ah, pa- no, eh, God forbid. That's the kind of person Ezekiah was. The Bible says he so much trusted God that there was no one like him. Serve God like that. So that when a challenge comes, Oh God, remember, there will be something to remember now. Let's look at the last one, the fourth one. In 2 Kings chapter 19, 1 to 7, and nothing that moved God about Ezekiah. 2 Kings chapter 19, 1 to 7. And it came to pass, when King Ezekiah had it, what did he hear? In chapter 18, Zenim Kebrim, a big, a king with a big army, the king of Assyria, came to brag, I will destroy this city. I will do this, it's just like when... Uh, uh, American government sent their general to come to Nigeria to threaten us. You know, it's a battle we can't win. <laughs> and it came to pass when King Ezekiah had it that he rent his cloth, he tore his cloth, and covered himself with sackcloth and went where? And went into the house of God. You know what touched me here? Look at the way he handled problem. Ezekiah did not allow problem to take him far from God. Small thing, le Small thing can make a good Christian. So I mean, not, not a good Christian. Some Christians to deny God, Lord, and they say you are real. They say you exist. You are you sure you exist? I have had people like say like that because of something that happened. Some will even look at and say, I regret serving you. Killer Chigbo, pastor, 29 years of ministry. Some of my sons and daughters here, here, have told me before, sir, your teachings, your teaching is the reason why it's like I'm doing like Mumu. This your teaching is not working. And I'll say, if, if, I, if, you, say, if you say my teaching is not working, it means the Bible is the one that is not working. But look at how he handled problem. Look, let's read on. We'll stop at verse 9. That when he had it, he went, after tearing his cloth that shows humility, he went into the house of God. Kilo verse 2. And he, he sent Eliakim, which was over the household of Shib, uh, Shibna, the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet. He now sends somebody to Isaiah the prophet, Son of uh, uh, of Amos, yes, verse three. Verse three. And they said unto him, "Thus saith Ezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, a day of rebuke, a day of blasphemy, for the children are come to the bed, and there is no strength to bring forth. If it may be, sorry." The Lord thy God will hear all the words of Rabs Shaka, that's the, 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 yes, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God. And will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayers 
for the remnant that are left. Can you see? He didn't cause God though. He was lifting up his voice. So the servant of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. Verse 6. When he came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said unto him, Thus shall you say to your master, Thus shall the Lord be, uh, say the Lord, sorry, be not afraid of the words which thou art heard, with which the servant of the king of Assyria has blasphemed me. Verse 7. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor, and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Verse 8. So Rabshaka returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was the parted from Lachish. And when he had, when he, uh, so where, where am I? And when he had say of Tahika, king of Ethiopia, behold, he's come out to fight against thee. He sent messengers against, again unto his car, saying, oh, long more. Well, this one is for another time. This one is a prayer meeting stuff. This verse 10. Maybe we'll treat that one in Shiloh. By everyone mocking your God. Thus shall you speak to his guy, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trusted, deceive thee. That's why everything that is mocking God in your life shall be put to shame. But that's not for today. But you know what? The way he handled that situation made God to arise. How do you handle problems? How do you handle challenges? I wrote here, see how King Hezekiah handled the, the, the very big problem. That very big problem. God is moved. When you do not allow problem make you doubt God or turn from him, God is moved. When you don't allow problems to, to, to move you away from God. When you don't allow problems to turn you from God, God is moved. The man tore his garment. It was a very big problem and he went before the Lord. Some of you will tear your garment and yet go against the Lord. Some will say, I won't go to church again. Some will say, I won't serve this God again. Some will say, I don't think this God is real. Now, can you now see what God remember? Hello? When, when he said, oh God, remember. Can you now see what he remember? If I tell you more, if I open more, you will see more. But I just gather this for. Can you see what God remember? That's what I want to ask you. In your times that you need God, for instance, it's not only when you have problem. It may be a position in your office that they are saying advertising. There's a position as the uh, senior manager, the regional manager, you know. Uh, which other position is other than regional manager? Branches under. The after regional, which one? Speak out now. After region, there's no other one. And you, this is you saying, Lord, I want to be the one that will be chosen for that job. Lord, remember. What will God remember? You that you are ordinary marketer, you are not even going to church again. You are not in your department anymore. You are not even a tighter. And you are saying, Lord, remember, give me the the regional office, if you give me, I promise you this. No. It is not a time to promise. There are some times, it's not time to promise. There are some battles you win by vow. Hello? But there are some battles you win by your past record. Check into some yoga. I won't go come what? To jake a je, ne yon fin borie. Chuba won't come what? To jake. Ma? I want to teach you saying. Yes, won't you teach you silly? Luma mwe boli. Take it all on money. Jeka she will not see. Kila ma bambe. On tomba bambe luma determine. Buyo ma boli. That's why if I'm you, continue to labor. Let's take one more scripture before we go back to the foundational scripture. Listen, when, sorry, what, sorry, with what does God reward? 
when God wants to reward you, with what will he reward you? 2 Kings chapter 18, 7 and 8. Now look at it. And the Lord was with him. And what happened? He prospered. Whatsoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. Verse 8. He prospered. He smote the Philistines even unto Gaza and the borders thereof for the thrower of the watchman to the fence city. Can you see? When God wants to reward you, with what will he reward you? He will reward you with his goodness. Now put back our scripture, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. That was our opener. Scripture Tafi Berenia, when you have a parry, Hebrews 6 chapter 10. Yeah, God, said that say. <laughs> he doesn't forget to. Where's Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10? Can we read together? One, two, and let's go again. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have shewed towards his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. NIV version, NLT version, and Message Bible. NIV. I told you I read NIV as a young convert till I became a pastor. NIV. One, two, and let's go. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. NLT. Okay, message. Let's go. God does not miss anything. <laughs> oh, no, let's come again. One, two, and let's go. God doesn't miss anything. He knows perfectly well all the love you have shown him by helping needy Christians and that you keep at it. NLT. Let's go. For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. Do you have the Amplified Bible? Do you have the Amplified Bible? Version? Sorry. Thank you. Let's go together again. For God is not un unrighteous to forget or overlook your labor and the love which you have shown for his name's sake in ministering to the needs of the saints, his own consecrated people, as you still do. Can you see? He doesn't forget. That's why I see. You know what you should be doing now as a child of God? Hello? Continue to increase your account with more labor of love. What did I say? Continue to increase your account. I remember Mr. Jimon's testimony. I won't forget. That time he had a stroke. I went to visit him. And he sat, can you remember, are you there? He sat on the floor. His two legs like this stretched. And his wife was standing behind him. She used her leg to support his back. So when I got here, I said, which kind of sitting arrangement is this? Yeah? Why are you using your leg to push your husband's back? Remove yourself, leave, leave, move from behind him. He says, sir, if I move, he cannot sit. He cannot stand. I said, let me see. As she moved, the man just went down like this. Ah! What happened? Stroke. You know, 
that day I fear God. Because before he had that stroke, I chose him among the team of people that would go and walk in one of our branch. Which branch was that? A level church. I, I mentioned about five or six of them. And I said, Daddy Grace, you are part of the team that will be going to a level. So I prayed with him. Ah, you know what do me? I wept while I was praying. Lord, please heal Daddy Grace. He could not move any hand. If Mommy Grace lifts his hand like this, he will come down. If he lifts this one, he will come down. So we prayed. And I came back home. Was it second or third day? I can't remember again. He got a dream that night. He said he saw himself going. He was going. He was going. He said, someone now said, you have an assignment. You are not supposed to be where you are. Go back. He said, now say, yes, I remember. Pastor, I'm part of those that pastor sent to a left. Pastor sent me on assignment. He sent me on assignment. That's why I see a interman function church. You know. So so they will now go behind and say, me anything. You now be watching the department. Eh, I know He woke up from that dream and stood up. The wife called me. She's the one coming in now. Mommy Grace. I went back to where she. <laughs> She's coming late and she's holding her chest when she had mommy grace. When I went back, I saw that the grace. He sat down by himself. He stood up by himself. They were not, he didn't go to any hospital. I'm not saying hospital is bad. But look at how God brought him back. That's how many years ago. Because we've been in human keep record. I won't go to the with grace one, three, four years. Can we clap for Jesus? What if, now my question now is, what if when God put it in my heart to call him to that team, I didn't agree? Or, if when I said, that the grace, you are part of the team going to a level, he didn't agree. Do you know that you will have had that stroke? And it's having like that. But the remembrance of the assignment, the person said, go back. You have an assignment. Go and do that assignment. That's why by the time he, he, he came back, I put him under another assignment. Some of you don't know the reason why I put him as head of sanctuary keepers. I gave him another assignment. Hello, join son, and you are going to head that department. God does not forget. That's why. Take your work for God seriously. Don't listen to those that are trying to discourage you. They want to implicate you. You face it and do it as your own labor of love for the kingdom. And you will see the reward. The only thing is just that. The Bible says he rewards when? In due season. It's only him that knows that due season. Even in Ecclesiastes, he went for that to say, he maketh everything beautiful. When? In his own time. <laughs> so time me and go home. For you just continue to invest your labor of love. One more word before I close. Show us that scripture again, please. I always tell my daughter too, she's the one there. If they call you to lead praise from your sleep, and you're like, go and do it. Don't argue. Go and do it. Do you know why? You are loading your account. For God is not on, on, on righteous to forget your work and labor of love. You are loading your account.
You see my children too. You see them everywhere. I used to tell the other one, oh, take, you are in the ocean. Take your work serious. At times when they want to do the communion, we don't see the people. You go and do it. Don't wait for instruction. What are you doing when you are doing all these things? You are loading your account. It may be when you face an exam, you say, Lord, please remember. Because there's a point you will need that account. So I want to ask you, what is in your own savings account? Me, so your savings account is bill. What is in your savings account? You had my wife's testimony now. We're trusting God for a male child. And she was busy taking care of the altar when she had the voice of God. I will give you a son. Account you are. Spiritual account you are. I was busy doing evangelism all my life. In those days, okay, Bola. When God said to me, I had God clearly, I will give you a wife. And God mentioned her name. She said, she's a gift for, of service. So if we have been married 21 years, Kosija, Kosipa and Nurawa, Kokeru Jadiri Konloba me be You know there are people like, Kokeru Jadiri Konloba me be padawale. Baba gbe gari le gari juice ni. O ma futa yota o gari juice. Bo se ba la fe fi breakfast. O lo. Are you getting what I'm saying? On tolorun fun yan. O ya to se nkan ti yan na won gba. Do you know what? Can I tell you this? I started eh, rough evangelism, rugged evangelism from when I was 16 years old. 16 years old. At my jealousy, I do go. Rough, when I say rugged evangelism, 6, 6 30, 5 30 a.m. at times. Good morning on the street. I'll be preaching the gospel. People were giving their life to Christ. I didn't know that I was investing labor of love. That's why from far and near, both Nigeria, from abroad, people send money to me. Far and near. Merry Christmas, sir. Merry Christmas, sir. Happy birthday, sir. Happy birthday, sir. Show us that scripture again. I'm closing. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. Can I ask you, will you continue to labor in love in this kingdom of God? Please continue. So that when God decides to say it's time for reward, there will be something in your account that will call for it. Bow down, yes, and begin to pray. Lord, help me strengthen my hands for more work in your kingdom. Strengthen my hands for more work in your kingdom. Strengthen your, my hands for more work in your kingdom, oh God. More work. More work. Are you praying? Are you praying for more work in your kingdom? For more labor of love. Strengthen my hands for it, Lord. Strengthen my hands for it. I have not done anything. I want to do, oh God. Father, strengthen my hands. Strengthen my heart. Strengthen my will. Let my will to do more of your work, Lord, be strengthened. Let my hunger for your work increase. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Remove that gum from your mouth and begin to pray for yourself.
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Exalted Father, I thank you again today for how deep you have spoken to us. We ask for more grace. Lord, to be committed to investment in your kingdom. Strengthen our hands for more work, oh God. Thank you for it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. And amen. Please can we come to the table and